In this section 1.7, we will be talking about linearly independent sets and the linearly dependent sets. Remember at the end of section 1.6, we talked about sets whenever a vector is a linear combination of other vectors, of the remaining vectors in the set, then the vector can be removed without changing the span of the set. And um, such a vector, because it's a linear combination of the remaining vectors, we can say that it depends on other vector. And because of this dependency, removing it does not change the span. And that really is a linearly dependent set, as we will talk about in this section. So we will be talking about linearly independent sets, linearly dependent sets, and the connection with span and the connection with the solution of system of linear equations. We will be talking about linearly independent sets a lot. We will give it an abbreviation, linear independent sets. And for linearly dependent set, we will use the abbreviation LDEP. So that would be the abbreviation that we will be using. First, definition of a linearly dependent set. We have a set here, S, that is a collection of n vectors, u1 to un, and each of these u vector is a vector in Rm. And we set the set linearly dependent if we can find scalars, c1 to cn, but not all the scalars are zero, okay? Some of them may be zero, but some of them are not, not all zero, such that the linear combination u1, we linearly combine this vector un, and we linearly combine them, right? So we multiply the first vector with the c1, the second vector with the c2, the last vector with the cn, and we add them all up, and the result is the zero vector. So, it's possible, that, so a set is linearly dependent if we can find a set of linear combination coefficient such that the linear combination is the zero vector. Then we say it's linearly dependent. And these linear combination coefficient, some of them may be zero, but not all zero. We say S is linearly dependent or sometimes we will simply say that these vectors are linearly dependent. These vectors are linearly dependent. Now suppose we have a set S. It has two vectors, the zero vector and a u vector. Is S linearly dependent? Is S linearly dependent? Well, then we form linear combination, right? Form linear combination the zero vector and the u vector and we ask if there exist coefficient c1 and c2 such that when we add them together the result is the zero vector. Can we find coefficient c1 and c2 so that the linear combination give us the zero vector? One example is that we can choose C1 equal to, for example, 1, and C2 equal to 0, then the linear combination is indeed the 0 vector, right? So S is linearly dependent indeed. On the other hand, we say S is linearly independent. Okay, first we define linearly dependent set, right? Now we define linearly independent set. If whenever a linear combination like this, u of these n vectors is the zero vector, it implies that these linear combination coefficients are all zero. For example, S is a set of two vectors, the two standard vectors in R2, and now we want to know if S is linearly independent. How can we see this? We form the linear combination 
one zero and zero one and then we multiply it with the coefficient c1 and the c2 and we add them together let's say the result is zero does this imply c1 and c2 are equal to zero at the left hand side we get the vector c1 and the c2 at the bottom and equal to the zero vector so indeed this implies that c1 and c2 are both equal to zero and that would make s and linearly independent set all right so we have defined a linearly dependent set and a linearly independent set for linearly dependent set we can form a linear combination of these u vectors such that the linear combination is the zero vector and these linear combination coefficients are not all zero some of them may be zero but some of them are now zero so why do we call it a linearly dependent set why the name linearly dependent because the linear combination gives us a zero vector not all the linear combination coefficient are equal to zero so let's say that one of them is not equal to zero suppose it's a cl for some l cl is not equal to zero but the linear combination c1 u1 c2 u2 cl ul all the way to cn un the linear combination is the zero vector let's keep cl on the left hand side and uh, all the other terms CLUL on the left hand side and all the other terms are moved to the right hand side so at the right hand side we have a summation of CIUI and I goes from 1 to N but uh, this I is not equal to L because this L term is still on the left hand side and uh, we have it move it to the right hand side so we have a minus here we can divide both sides by CL so at the left hand side we are left with the UL and on the right hand side these coefficients are divided by CL and we can see that what is the right hand side is it a linear combination Yes, indeed, it's a linear combination of all the u vector except ul. So ul is actually a linear combination of the other vectors. Or we can say that ul depends on the other vector because it can be obtained from other vectors using linear combination. And from the results that we have in section 1.6, we know ul can be removed without changing the span. Okay, and because we can when a set is linearly dependent, we can always find a vector that is a linear combination of other vectors or we can always find a vector that depends on the other vectors. So we say the set is linearly dependent. Linearly dependent set, we can always remove a vector without changing the span, whereas in the linearly independent case, then no vector can be removed without affecting the span. Whenever we remove one vector, then the span will be affected. The span will be changed. Question time. Suppose S is not, li not linearly independent. Does it imply that S is linearly dependent? All right. So if S is linearly, if S is not linearly independent, what does that mean? That means that the linear combination is equal to zero does not imply the coefficients are all zero so some of them are non-zero if some of them are non-zero that means we can find linear combination coefficient not all zero so the linear combination is zero so if s is not linearly independent and that will make s linearly dependent now the converse question suppose s is not linearly dependent does that make s linearly independent it's yes isn't it another question suppose we have a set of only one vector and this is a non-zero vector is this set linearly independent a linear combination of the vector will mean scalar multiple if the scalar multiple is equal to zero that will mean the coefficient is equal to zero indeed this is linearly independent. How about the zero vector? Is the zero vector linearly independent? We can always find a non-zero coefficient so that the scalar multiple is equal to the zero vector, right? 
so it's not linearly independent. How about the set with a zero vector and a u vector? Would it be linearly independent? We have already seen such an example already, right? One is zero vector and the other one is not. Then we can always find not all zero coefficients, like in this example. That will make it a linearly dependent set. So this is a linearly dependent set. Another example, we have a set of standard vectors, e1 to em, and these standard vectors are vectors of rm. Are they linearly independent? Well, we have already seen an example like this. We form linear combination of this vectors, and uh, suppose the linear combination is equal to the zero vector. We get the conclusion that the vector on the left hand side is the c1, 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 c2 to cm vector, and on the right hand side is the zero vector, and this will imply that c1, c2 to cm are equal to zero, and uh, the set linearly independent? Yes, indeed. It turns out that linearly independent set have a close relationship with this equation, ax equal to zero. Such an equation, ax equal to zero, has a special name. It's called a homogeneous equation. Suppose A matrix is n by n, so it has n column vectors. The system of linear equation ax equal to zero always consistent? It means, does it always have a solution? It's consistent, right? It's always consistent, right? Because we can always have the solution of x equal to zero is a solution. Now let's see how it's related to linearly independent set. Remember that this is a matrix, ax is matrix vector product. Matrix vector product. A matrix vector product we can write it like this, a0, a to a n, and x1 to x n, that's equal to zero. Matrix vector product is the same as linear combination. We are forming linear combination of the column vectors of a, and the linear combination coefficients are the entries of x x1 to xn, these are the linear combination coefficients, and such a linear combination is equal to the zero vector. Now, does it look like it has something to do with the linearly independent set? Now, suppose that this a1 to an are linearly dependent. They are linearly dependent. Remember the definition of linearly dependent? If they are linearly dependent, that means we can find linear combination coefficient not all zero so that the linear combination is the zero vector. So by definition of linearly dependent sets, this is the same as saying that the homogeneous equation has a non-zero solution. It has a non-zero solution on top of the zero solution. So it has more than one solution. If it has more than one solution, that's the same as saying that the solution not unique. There's more than one. So the solution is not unique. If the solution is not unique, what does that say about the nullity of A? That means there's a free variable, right? If there's no free variable, the solution will be unique, but now that the solution is not unique, that means there's a free variable and there's nullity must be greater than zero. Alternatively, we can say this, a1 to an are linear independent. We are negating the statement here. They are negating the statement here. That means the statement, if this statement is a, then this is not a. If a1 to an are linearly independent, if and only if the solution is unique, if and only, only if nullity of A is equal to zero. Let's consider the solution of AX equal to zero for two cases. The first one, M is larger than N, and the second one, M is smaller than N. When M is larger or equal to N, A will be a tall matrix or a wide matrix. It would be a tall matrix, right? It's a tall matrix. Again, split it into two cases. 
the first one, rank A is equal to N. And the other case that rank A is smaller than N. If rank A is equal to N, what is the nullity of A? The nullity of A is N minus rank A, right? So it's equal to zero. And in the other case, nullity of nullity A. Nullity A is larger than zero. Now, what can we say about the solution of the homogeneous equation for these two cases? If a nullity of A is equal to zero, from what we have just discussed here, nullity of A is equal to zero, then the solution is unique. Solution of homogeneous equation, unique. And for the second one, solution of the homogeneous equation, not unique. Now for the case that m is smaller than n, and in this case, a would be a wide matrix. For the first case, we have two. We discuss the case a is rank a is equal to n, and the case that rank a is smaller than n. Now, when m is smaller than n, can we have rank equal to n? Rank a, remember rank a is smaller than or equal to m, right? But in this case, m is smaller than n. Rank a cannot be equal to n. And that will make a nullity of a positive integer. And the solution of the homogeneous equation will be not unique. Question time. Suppose we have a set S has n vector u1 to un. And each of these u vector is a vector in R m. And the number of vectors n is larger than m. And the question is, is S linearly dependent set? How can we proceed with a, such a question? From our earlier conclusion, we know whether a set is linearly dependent. We can simply form a matrix. We can use these vectors to form a matrix A. And uh, we examine the homogeneous equation and see if the solution is unique or not. Or we can examine the nullity of the A matrix. So let's form a matrix. Matrix B, the column vectors of this matrix B are these vectors. Then B matrix will be M by N. And then we already know N is larger than M, right? Or M is smaller than N. Is this the same as the case that we have discussed earlier? Because M is smaller than N, so that would make B a Y matrix or a tall matrix. It would be a wide matrix, so which case? It would be the case that the wide matrix case. And in this case, we have already known that the solution is not unique. Nullity of A is larger than zero. So BX equal to zero, not unique. Nullity of B is larger than zero, so nullity of b is larger than zero. So what about those vectors? Linearly independent or dependent? They will be linearly dependent. Theorem 1.a summarizes some equivalent statements here. Suppose a is a matrix that's n by n, and the reduced Rajlan form is r. Then a, the columns of a are linearly independent. If and only if the system of linear equation has at most one solution for each B in Rm, there cannot be more than one. And this is the same as saying that nullity of A is equal to zero, and the same as saying rank A is equal to N, because rank A is equal to N, the columns of R are distinct standard vectors. Distinct. That means they are all different standard vectors.